Greetings everybody from Byron Bay in Australia. My name is Tara Lee Byrne and welcome to the very first video in our four part series. So my favorite meal of the day is without a doubt breakfast. And I like to call this session Bountiful Breakfasts. So I'm going to be teaching you from scratch how to make your own nut milk at home. Really, this is so simple. You will never want to have to go out and buy any type of nut milk ever again. It's so fresh and so easy, and you also know exactly how long it has been made for. You know exactly what has gone into it and the love and the emotion that has gone behind it. So we're going to start. The very first thing is you are going to be working with, let's say, almonds or cashews. So we're going to work today with an almond milk because this seems to be the one that's most popular for people. Almonds in Europe in particular are definitely cheaper than cashews. So um, what you'll do is, uh, as part of the whole foods approach, I'm going to be dropping in little bits of information about soaking and about activating and about the different processes that we do naturally to our food um, in their raw state. And so the very first one we're going to be encountering is soaking our almonds. So by soaking your nuts, for example, the almonds, um, we are releasing the digestive um, inhibitors, which are known as the phytic acid, which makes it easier for us to digest the nut. Sometimes when people have nuts and um, they find them really hard on their stomach to digest or they give them gas or cramping, when you soak the nuts for the specific amount of time suitable for that nut, then it allows you to release or allows the nut to release the digestive enzyme and um, the inhibitor, which will then make it easier on your system to be able to process and to digest. And each nut has different um, soaking time. And contrary to what you will hear, um, I'm going to give you a whole guide for all the different soaking times for nuts and seeds. And trust me, this is from Matthew Kenny from Plant Lab in um, USA, where I studied in Santa Monica um, as a raw and whole foods chef. And he is the king of raw food. And uh, you will see a lot of people say soaking them for, for longer periods. You can actually um, disrupt the, the process um, if you soak them for too long or if you don't soak them for, for uh, long enough. So I'm giving you really, really um, good guidelines to work with. And uh, I've been using this for the last seven or eight years myself. So we are going to start with the one cup of almonds. So almonds you soak for eight to 12 hours, which means they're perfect to soak overnight. Um, and you soak them in, uh, if you have uh, water that is um, non-chlorinated and um, filtered water, that's wonderful. If you're living in a good area where um, the tap water is also um, drinkable, then you can use that. So soak the almonds in about double the amount of water. Um, leave them, put them in the fridge. Don't leave them out, put them in the fridge, especially if you live in a hotter climate. And then the next morning you're going to take them out and you're going to rinse them a couple of times until the water runs clear. So you're actually releasing any of the phytic acid that's there, also any of the dust or um, particles that have been, uh, you know, used, um, shall we say, kind of accumulated in the shipping or in the packaging. Yeah, so you want to clear, run that until the water is clear. And then you're going to take, I uh, use one and a half liters of uh, water to one cup of almonds. Now, I don't deal in grams and uh, milliliters, etc., etc. per se, apart from the one and a half liters. I, when I'm measuring out um, solids, I like to use cups. I find it much, much easier. So my tip here is always use the same size cup for the same recipe. So if you're doing almond milk, um, use the same size cup of the almond milk as you would to the water. Roughly it works out to be, um, depending on how strong you like your almond milk or how thick you want it, I like to say that you're about one cup of nuts to five cups of water. Some people like to work with three, but I, I prefer my almond milk not to be too thick. So we're going to um, have the uh, one and a half liters of water and one cup of almonds that have been pre-soaked. And you'll see when you actually take them out of the, uh, of the water after rinsing them, that they're, they've kind of swollen up a little bit, almost like they're pregnant. And, um, and if you actually chew them as they are, they're really much, much easier. You can already taste how much softer and creamier um, they are than when you would just be biting into them dry. So we're going to pop them in there. 
then we're going to buzz this. So it's going to happen a lot, so apologies for the loud sound. <laughs> Vitamix at home, don't worry. If you have a strong food processor um, or even uh, the Nutribullet or some other blender, um, you, can do, you can still make the almond milk. It, it won't be as uh, finely um, ground down with the almonds, but that's what we're going to have another step in the process here. So if you do have a blender that's not as strong as the Vitamix or um, the Blendtec is another one, um, don't worry, you can still make this. Okay, so we are going to blend it there and you can see that it's, that's actually brings you up with all of the foam up to just over two litres. Now what we're going to do next is, there's two options you have available to you here. Personally, I love keeping all of the almond pulp in the almond milk that I'm making because I will predominantly use my almond milk for smoothies. Um, I don't put almond milk in a tea or uh, or in coffee, so as a result, I don't really mind having that really lovely uh, kind of extra nuttiness and the goodness of all the skin and the um, the roughage. I li I really like that consistency. It's definitely giving me a more satiated feeling. However, some people just like to have it pure and not to have any of that. And so I'm all for not wasting anything. So what you can do with that is. And this is an option. This is a nut milk bag. You can, if you don't have a nut milk bag at home, then you can easily just uh, use a very fine tea towel or a bit of cheesecloth. Put it around a small jug like this. Now this is if you want to have the almond milk that is really, really um, fine with no uh, particles of the almond, of the skin or flex or anything at all. So you're going to pour it in here. Now I'm just going to do half so you can see half half. And then the almond milk, uh, nut milk bag, should I say, is really handy because you can have the little um, uh, tie at the top. And then you're just going to gently, gently squeeze. And you want to make sure that you, yeah, exactly, don't squirt out the almond milk. <laughs> so you squeeze more from the top going down rather than the bottom. <laughs> you squeeze from the bottom than all the milk squirts up above your hand, just like it did there. <laughs> yeah. And what's going to happen here is that you're going to be left with this wonderful almond pulp and very, very fine almond milk. And as I was just mentioning, we don't have to throw out this pulp, which is wonderful because there's so much goodness still left in this. What I love to do is, um, I love to freeze this and I would then throw it into my soups. There's a, I make a beautiful um, broccoli and almond soup. So uh, I love to freeze the, the pulp and uh, put it, you can either freeze it in um, some greaseproof paper or even in ice cube trays and uh, save it and then use it in the soup. Um, any soups, stews, anything like that. It doesn't have any flavor at the moment because we haven't added any flavoring to the nut milk just yet. So don't be worrying, you're not going to have like a honey or vanilla flavored soup. Um, but you can save this. Also, you can actually use it for some of your bliss balls. Um, you can also use it for what we're going to be making later on in the series, which is our cheesecake. Um, so there's, it's got lots of uses, even into cookies. Um, you know, almond flour is really expensive to purchase, um, which is um, basically what I have made here, just the almond flour. So you can actually save it easily yourself and, um, and kill two birds with one stone. So I'm going to leave that with that. Now, the next step with the almond milk. So we have this much here. This one you could be using absolutely perfectly if you wanted to put this into um, tea or coffee. And again, if you don't particularly want to be using um, 
the 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 almond milk with the pulp and with the um, with the outer skin then what you can do with that is um, you can just keep this separately and then maybe just use that for your smoothies uh, so this here gives us 800 ml so that's half of this which is really really good going so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this into um, my culinary jar just for the moment because there's another step that we have to do so a lot of people think um, oh the almond milk is just milk and water and this is actually where a lot of people fall down with the building a really beautiful flavored uh, profile on the almond milk and having that rich creamy texture um, and again I was taught this in Matthew Kenny uh, Culinary Academy and it just it blew my mind that this is why all these nut milks I've been having for so long were so bland and so boring it was because they were missing all of the other um, components that we need in order to have a really stabilized milk so the other components that we need to add to the milk now in order to get perfect flavor, rich, creamy texture and balanced sweetness. Okay, we're gonna pop this back into the Vitamix. Yep. So we need to have a fat. And um, I love to use a, a melted um, organic uh, virgin coconut oil. So this is the coconut oil in its um, how should we say, non-melted state. <laughs> Some people might call this coconut butter, but um, this is the coconut oil when it's solidified. Um, here in the tropics, like in Australia or in India and Asia, um, a lot of the time you won't necessarily see it with this white color, it will be melted. Whereas back in Europe, much chillier climate, um, it's generally uh, taking on this <laughs> character in the supermarkets and in your house, especially in my cottage in Ireland where it was absolutely freezing and you have to hack it to try and get it out. So when you open it up, it's still solidified. So you're going to um, melt this um, over a very low gentle heat um, and uh, until it becomes a clear liquid, literally the same color as water. And uh, I advise doing adding the melted um, coconut oil in here, not the solid one, because the solid one will actually not break down and not blend with the rest of the ingredients. So what we're going to do is we are going to take the coconut oil, then we're going to take our sweetener. So we need to have a sweetener um, for the, the milk. And uh, if you're vegan, um, you can use brown rice syrup, you can use maple syrup, I don't necessarily advocate uh, using agave myself, um, or you can use dates, beautiful medjool dates. Um, if you're not vegan and uh, you're happy to use honey, then I would definitely encourage you to use a local raw honey, a honey that has not been heat treated and that is from your area because the honey that you're taking from your area is actually providing your body with um, immunity against seasonal threats such as hay fever um, and any issues that will come up in the environment of where you live. So there's no point in, if you live in Spain buying a honey that is from uh, America, it has beneficial properties but it's not actually protecting you from the threats that are in your environment uh, to where you are actually living. So I am very fortunate here in Byron Bay there are an absolute multitude of local and raw honey producers so as a result it's actually really affordable which is wonderful and um, you know you can see the hives alongside the road and up in the hinterland um, so it's really beautiful to have such a close proximity to the actual farmer and producer. So we're going to have the fat which is the coconut oil we're going to have the honey the local raw honey um, if possible we're also going to add in a flavoring now um, to have the beautiful flavor of the of the vanilla um, I'm going to use this really gorgeous organic vanilla extract um, you can also use the vanilla um, pod the inside of the vanilla pod which I'll be actually showing you in our desserts um, series uh, episode whereby how you, how you de seed the pod. Um, please don't buy vanilla essence because that is absolutely chock full with chemicals, and um, whereas the extract is just purely distilled vanilla pod and um, distilled in alcohol, generally vodka. And uh, so we have a honey, we have an oil, we have the vanilla extract, and we need to balance that out with our salt. So we're going to be using pink Himalayan rock salt. I don't like to use sea salt in my recipes, um, predominantly because of the 
state of the seas and um, you can't really be guaranteed where the, sea, where the salt is coming from uh, and the quality of the salt. I know there's wonderful sea salts in France and also off the West Atlantic coast of Ireland um, but there's a lot of pollution in our seas and pollution doesn't really exist in the Himalayas so I think you're a little bit safer going down that route. Just my personal choice, it's completely up to you. Um, okay, so enough. One tablespoon of honey, one tablespoon of raw coconut oil, gently melted. There we go. I just pre prepared this. A pinch of the Himalayan rock salt, ground down, and a teaspoon of the vanilla extract. Now, once you get to know the different uh, brands of vanilla extract that you like to use, you'll find that some are stronger than others. I actually, in Europe, I love the Madagascan vanilla extract. It is, it's, a, it's a really more subtle flavor. And um, this one is definitely stronger um, in, in the alcohol content, I find, although it is produced locally, which is why I like um, uh, manufactured locally, should I say, which is why I like supporting them. So I would use probably just a little bit less than that. Um, you'll get used to your different um, brands, um, but the Madagascan one in, in Europe, uh, especially in Ireland and the UK, is absolutely delicious. So it's um, one teaspoon of that if you're going to use that one. And then you just blend. some of this for you so you can see exactly what the end result is like we have a beautiful creamy froth and it's all nicely emulsified together and this will keep for up to two days in the fridge um, it, you can actually also freeze it in ice cube trays if you wish um, to be able to use as, as you need it and um, if you're making your smoothies if you don't think you're going to be using a litre or a litre and a half over the next couple of days um, it's very easy to just freeze, freeze it in ice cube trays or even in those little containers um, the silicone containers whereby you can freeze bigger chunks of it um, and then use it as you need. Okay, so I, um, I'm going to include on the PDF sheet for you uh, the um, substitution if you wish to use uh, brown rice syrup or maple syrup um, or even the medjool dates for your almond milk. And it is possible also for you to make the same recipe with cashew milk. Um, with the cashews, you will soak them for one to two hours maximum, 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 no matter what you see anywhere else, one to two hours maximum, and follow the exact same steps. You don't have to actually um, squeeze out the pulp from the cashew nut because really it hasn't got the skin on the cashew nut and it hasn't got really any outer shell or any coarse bits. It all actually ends up blending up beautifully in the, um, in the Vitamix or in your blender anyway. So it's not really necessary to go down the route, the step, the, sorry, the step of uh, squeezing it um, out. If you want it like super fine, then of course you can, but really let's just take it a little bit easy and not be so um, worried about that small issue um, um, at this stage. And uh, this, as it is, is absolutely gorgeous in coffee, gorgeous even if you're making a nice hot chocolate as well. Um, I haven't tried it in tea because I'm definitely a tea, a black tea or a grey tea person and it makes gorgeous uh, matcha, um, um, almond milk matcha lattes as well. So I wish you all the best and look forward to hearing your feedback on your homemade nut milk. Thank you. So we've just made our own almond milk, which is pretty impressive. Um, or maybe you've made cashew milk at home. And uh, we're gonna move on to making the all-time favorite smoothie of mine called I Am Awesome. Yeah. Um, when I moved to Byron Bay five or six years ago, I discovered this whole new spectrum of smoothies that existed that I had no concept around before. Um, activated almond milk, I'd heard of, but not really, you know, totally knew how they were using it and incorporating it and all of the superfoods that um, you can then add as an additional um, uh, benefit to your to your smoothie for whatever reason whether you're looking for glowing skin whether you're looking for extra hydration whether you're looking for more energy so I'm going to show you today how to construct 
the perfect nutritionally dense and delicious smoothie. There's no point in having a smoothie that is off the charts um, of my health benefits if it actually tastes like pond water. Okay, let's be honest. And we know so many of the smoothies that we buy and we pay like five, six euros or here in Byron like $12 for um, and in Australia in general, they are not always great. And they're far from what we thought maybe a smoothie was before, which might have been just, you know, yogurt and strawberries and maybe a little bit of kiwi or something. So there's there's actually a science behind building the ultimate flavor profile and the nu nu nutritionally dense profile as well. So what you're looking for first is you're going to have your milk format. So whether that's an almond milk, whether it's cashew, whether it's coconut milk, or whether it's moo juice, okay? Preferably organic one if you can. So that's going to obviously form the, the core. Then what you're going to have then um, is you can add in uh, coconut water, you can add in a fruit. So what I'm going to be adding in here is a banana and then I love to with the banana to actually freeze the banana. So you get your banana when it's ripe, chop it all up into little chunks, pop it into a Tupperware container and keep it frozen. Firstly, it means that you're always going to have bananas at hand, um, either for that like last minute dessert emergency for a nice banana ice cream, or else for the smoothie, which is great to have on the go. Um, and, and also means they don't go off, which if they do, you can always make them for banana bread. But we're going to be using the banana, so it's nice to have it frozen. It also gives a much uh, creamier and thicker texture. Then um, also to have your uh, flavor, so maybe your flavor is going to be uh, strawberries, maybe it's going to be mango, maybe it's going to be raw cacao, raspberries, whatever your choice. Um, and then you also need to have some ice. So ice lends that much thicker texture. So if you want to have something, let's say, almost bordering on a smoothie bowl um, or in a side bowl, um, kind of con consistency, like really, really thick ice cream, almost uh, consistency, then you can add in quite a bit of ice, preferably filtered water. And then you're going to have like your superfoods or your enhancers. So for example, you'll have your vanilla um, extract. Um, maybe you have uh, my favorite, one of my favorite, my top three favorite uh, foods on the planet, which is matcha green tea. And um, maybe you're going to have some moringa. Maybe you're going to have some camu camu. Maybe you're going to have some maca. So you can ch choose any of these, or you can choose none of them. And you, but it's it's up to you. But also maybe your chia seeds as well. And then uh, some coconut oil. So you need to have your fat. So the same way that we built up the flavor profile on the um, almond milk, we have to do the same with a smoothie. So you have to have your fat, so we're going to have the coconut oil, or flax oil actually is also wonderful, or hemp oil, avocado oil, any of these. You're going to have your sweetener. Now, we're not going to use honey, so this is a vegan uh, uh, um, smoothie today. We're going to use these absolutely delicious and decadent medjool dates. So medjool dates are really the king of the date. <laughs> and um, they do come with the pit, with the stone, so you need to pit them when uh, before you use them. So just remember that. And sometimes they have a little top part here, which is when they were um, hanging, that that's where they, they were attached to. Um, so you're going to have your sweetener. You can use, um, as I said before, maple um, or uh, brown rice syrup. But for this recipe, really the medjool dates are, are just absolutely perfect and um, you're going to have a little bit of your Himalayan salt because contrary to what you might believe when you add a little bit of salt to a recipe it actually also helps bring out the sweetness and it's the same or vice versa and you're then going to have after that you might have another ingredient like spinach or you might decide to put in um, let's say uh, what else, uh, hemp seeds, you know, there's, there's lots that you can um, work around with, but today's recipe is very simple. And so we're going to start from the very beginning. We're going to have two cups of, um, now this will be for two people. We're gonna have two cups of the almond milk. We're gonna have two to three handfuls of spinach. So a uh, baby leaf spinach already pre-washed. Gonna pop that in there. I like to freeze my uh, large ice cubes in these um, ice pop holders. Uh, so they actually end up coming up looking like icicle lollies, yeah, yeah. So I put in one or two of those, I'm just going to put in one today. Then you're going to pop in two of your medjool dates, you're going to pit those, just pop out the pits, stones should I say. You're going to put in the chia seeds and um, uh, it's one teaspoon um, or one tablespoon of chia seeds, really it depends on kind of like how thick you want it. Today I'm going to put in one teaspoon, pinch of the Himalayan salt. 
Now, for the secret recipe, basically in all whole foods, <laughs> dressings and everything, and especially in smoothies, is tahini. Now, tahini is so underrated, and it is something I discovered really the beauty of about four years ago. Um, I use it a lot in my um, in my desserts, so especially my raw food desserts. Um, it is incredibly satiating. It's very, very filling. Tahini is um, pureed uh, and finely, very, very, very finely ground um, sesame seeds. And so there are so many nutritional benefits from it as well. I use one teaspoon of that. Now, this is optional. And obviously, if you're in Ireland, I don't really, or in Europe, should I say, I don't particularly like to buy avocados, um, mainly because they're not native to the area where I would be living. Um, but in, in uh, Australia and in Byron, I'm very lucky, they literally grow down the road. So I, and they're in season, we're in avocado season now. And um, avocado is a wonderful healthy fat to be using. If you are going to be, um, having breakfast very very early and you really want to stave your of the hunger right the way through until lunch this is just a wonderful way to be able to support that in your system um incredible for your skin incredible uh even to do as a face mask so i use half an avocado and when you want to put your avocado back in the fridge always put the old skin back over it before you wrap it up in your um, biodegradable cling film <laughs> which we have really easily uh, accessible to us here in Australia. Okay, so that's everything. Now we're just gonna blend it. really warm day today the coconut oil is actually basically on melting point so I'm gonna pop that in now <laughs> okay okay there we go now so that makes just under just a, a liter yeah a liter now you can see the consistency there it's quite thick now realistically that's kind of the size glass that i would have <laughs> in the morning because i might like to save a little bit and have it midway through the morning if i know i'm not going to be having lunch until let's say one or two and um, but if you're serving it in like one of the taller glasses at home then that will be two uh, two servings easily um you can always sprinkle this now with some nice hemp seeds. Um, if you wanted to actually make this thicker and to really uh, bulk it out more, you could add in, let's say, a handful of oats or gluten-free oats if you're following a gluten-free diet, just to kind of really make it more um, filling. Uh, but as it is, it is absolutely divine. Oh, just can't get enough. So good. Now, um, what I was going to say is that um, if you do like to have your smoothies more on the sweeter side, um, people might think, oh, because it's green, it, uh, you know, it, like it's really uh, spinachy tasting. It actually isn't. The spinach is really much uh, kind of blended into the whole overall profile. We actually lose out a lot of, of, of the flavor of the spinach, which you might normally get. Um, with all the other strong flavors and especially with the coconut oil but if you want to have it a little bit sweeter um, no harm in that you can uh, take another one of your medjool dates so you could up it to three dates if you wish to um, some people like to have that sweet smoothie in the morning rather than something a little bit more on the neutral side um, this again uh, I love to serve this with some toasted seeds and um, also with some um, nuts as well and uh, or even with some granola and um, if you don't want to use the avocado and you don't have them easily accessible or they're not in season to you or you don't wish to buy them, then you can actually add in another teaspoon of the chia seeds either just to kind of bulk it out. So, 
Cheers. Mm. So good.